So you can see on the screen here uh, that the uh, modules that we do currently have, and obviously you've already shared with us the ones that you're interested in, so we'll touch on those. A uh, quick little overview uh, for those of you who already know us, you, you know this, but for those of you who are new, I'm gonna touch on this. We are in uh, about 400 agencies uh, across actually the United States, Canada, and Australia. Um, and so uh, we, we kind of, we, we call ourselves worldwide now. When we jumped into Australia, that was really exciting. Um, and we do have a 98.5% retention rate, which tells us we are doing something right. And so thank you uh, for that. Um, we're, we're very, we, we take great pride in that as well. Um, we do work with all different types of agencies, whether you are a, a paid department combination, volunteer department, but we also work in the private sector as well. Um, so, you know, if there's anybody out there that you know, we work with uh, mining companies, we work with railroads, um, you know, we work with, um, you know, public service. Um, so if, if there's anybody out there else that you think we might uh, be able to help out, let us know, we'd be glad to talk to them. Um, so, public or um, PS Tracks is short for Public Safety Tracking Systems. We were founded back in 2009, so we've been doing this almost 12 years now. Hard to believe. Um, we are pri privately held, um, and so we do not. Uh, we we've never been bought by anybody. We are not up for sale, <laughs> um, and we we are very excited about that because we know that in uh, in this industry. Um, what we do is very specialized and we're we're very excited to be able to do that and offer that to our to our family and our clients. We're located in Littleton, Colorado, so about 10 miles south of the Denver metro area. If any of you are familiar with this area, that's where we're located. And like I said, this should actually say 12 years now of experience now that we've jumped into 2021. Um, one of the things that I wanted to point out is when we started, uh, the PS Tracks was started because the owner's daughter was a fire medic up in Black Hawk, Colorado. It's a little gambling mountain town here in the mountains. Uh, she was doing her truck checks one day back in 2009 on paper, like some of you who shared how you're doing it. That's how you're doing it. That's how she was doing it. She reached out to her dad one day and said, you know, this is really clunky and cumbersome and it's a pain. We can never locate the information we need to find in the future. Things get stuffed in binders. They get shoved in closets. And we're never able to locate that information if we get audited or if somebody comes in, you know, God forbid we, you know, we have an accident or something. And we can't prove um, without having to go through all this paperwork. And she said, Dad, is there a way that you can create something for us on a computer so we can just do our checks online? And here we are 12 years later with the platform that I'm gonna share with you. Well, when we developed this with uh, Blackhawk, um, they, they loved it. They were like, you should, you should share this with other departments, other agencies. So we did, we started going around the Denver Metro area and sharing this information with them. And what we learned very quickly um, is that when we were sharing this with them, they were like, well, that, that's great for Blackhawk, but that's not how we do things at all. That doesn't work for us. So we kind of had to take a step back. We didn't recognize at that time that everybody did it differently. We, we were under the assumption, you know, that pretty much everybody had the same guidelines that they followed and that's how they did it. But we didn't recognize that all of you have different internal policies, procedures that you follow. And so it didn't make sense for us to build this box and expect everybody to fit into it. So we kind of had to go back to the drawing board. And what the owner decided at that point was that anything um, that we did needed to be custom configured, literally custom configured to each individual department, each individual agency's needs. So that was the first thing. The second thing that we realized, and for those of you who, know, who, who use us, you know this. The second thing we realized is if we handed this to people and said, okay, here you go, you put the information in, it never got done. And it became what we commonly hear the term nowadays as shelfware. So it would just sit there and it never got inputted and it never got rolled out. So what the owner decided to do at that point was he was like, all right, well, that didn't work. So we went back to the drawing board again. And what he did is he put a team of people together here in Colorado, here in Littleton, whose sole purpose is to build your platform for you from the ground up. All right. So you hand us all of your information, no matter what format you have it in, if it's on an Excel spreadsheet, a Word doc, maybe you've got it handwritten somewhere. 
You hand us all that information. We take that information and our team builds it from the ground up for you. Now, this assures several things. Number one, it's going to make sure that the information that's going in is clean. Everything's spelled correctly. It's in the order that you want it in. Um, the other thing that this helps with is that this allows us to make sure it gets rolled out for you. Okay. We want to make sure that you're using this and that you're successful with it. So those are the main reasons why we decided to build it for the, for the people that we work with. So keep that in mind as, as we're going forward with this. So where that leads us today is what started out as a vehicle module, a truck check module basically, has now grown into the platform that you see here. The only one that's not on here is the inventory module that we talked about a little bit earlier. Um, but if you're interested in more information on that, please let us know and we'll certainly get you that information. Um, but what I want to point out here is the six modules that you see on the screen, you do have the ability to pick and choose between them. So if at the end of this, you're like, well, all of that was great information, Sally, but I really only care about the station module or the controlled substance module. Great. Start there. Um, we want you to be able to start with whatever modules meet the needs of your agency. So start there. Um, you don't have to do all of them. That's, that's not a requirement. Also, all of the modules function very similarly, with the exception of the controlled substance module. It is a little bit different, but you'll see it still functions very similarly. So whether we're talking about doing a check or setting alerts, running reports, things like that, they're all going to function the same way. Um, let me go to our next screen here. A couple other things that I want to touch on about PS Tracks. PS Tracks is not an app. Okay, it is a cloud-based platform, and there's several reasons we went th with that with that route. Number one, there's no user license fee, so you can have as many people using this as you need to, okay? You can also have multiple people doing checks all at the same time on different modules. So you can have two, three, four people out on one rig at the same time doing their checks, um, and it's not going to slow the system down. Everything comes off in real time. All right. Um, also, you can use this on any device. So we have lots of departments or agencies who opt to use their phone. Others use iPads. Others use laptops. It's going to work very well with all of those devices. Um, it is a cloud-based platform that belongs to you. So let's say in the future, for whatever reason, maybe your budgets get cut and you can't stay with us any longer. You will always have access to that information. It belongs to you. So you're, you're not cut off from that. It's not like we shut you down and you can't get in there anymore. You have access to all of your archived information at that time. We talked about it being built to your exact specifications. This is really important. Uh, for those of you who know this, I'm sure this is a huge uh, relief for you. Um, you can make adjustments within the system or we can do it for you. Okay, we recognize that in every department, there's usually a couple of people who really love technology and they love to be able to have access to the back end and, and take care of that themselves. And if you have people like that, that's, that's great. We will sit down and we will train them, we will teach them, we will give them that access and they'll be able to do that. If, however, uh, you're like me, and maybe that's not your forte, or you're like a majority of our other departments who just don't have time, you don't have five more minutes in your day to get in there and, and do that, then you reach out to us. You can call us, you can email us, whatever works best for you, and we will help you with that. We basically become your administrative assistants moving forward, all right? That's what we're here for. Um, the next question that always comes up with that is, is there an additional fee for that? Or do we have a limit on our time or what have you? No, there is no additional fee. And you can call us every day if you want to. I'm, that's what Nathan, if you're familiar, if, if you've been with us while, Nathan is, is our uh, production manager. You probably know him very well. And myself, that is what we do all day long is we kind of take all that information, what you need done, and we make sure it gets done for you. So make sure you're using that. If you're not familiar with that, know that you can use that with us. And if you're new to us, that's one of the things we were very passionate about is making sure that you're successful with the platform. We talked about every uh, module being custom built. You do have the ability to have a check all function based on the equipment that you're checking. So for like SCBA, PPE, sometimes they'll enable that check all function so you don't have to go through everything one at a time. It is an option. And the platform does mobily optimize to fit whatever device you're using. Now, this is just a screenshot example of another department's home screen. Um, just want to go through this real quick so that when we jump into our demo site here, you know what you're seeing uh, for those of you who are new to it. So here, 
On the left hand side, you see the schedule of items that are due for the day. These can be named any way you want them. Again, this is custom to you. So you can name your vehicles. You can have this in whatever order you want. So if you want your controlled substances at the top, you can do that. Again, if you're not using one of these modules, it's not going to show up on this screen here. In the middle here, we have our alerts. Now, this is really the backbone of the platform. This is what keeps everybody on the same page. This is what's going to identify, you know, if you've got issues, uh, if something's broken down, if something's missing. This is going to replace all your sticky notes, all of the redundant emails that you keep getting over and over. This is what you, this is what the platform is really all about, is this alert feature. And then you have the journal feature over here. I liken this to a virtual whiteboard. I, you know, for for those of you who are clients, if you're not using this feature, let's talk about that. I think this is a great way to communicate. You know, we know how busy you are and sometimes things forget to get mentioned or you write it on a whiteboard and it doesn't get seen. This way, when crew is logging in, they can see what's, what's being notified that day. And when we go into the demo site, I'll show you what that looks like as well. Let's talk about the alerts real quickly. Again, like I said, this is not an app. This is simply an icon that we're going to teach you how to put on whatever device you're using. Everybody has a unique username and password. They go ahead and sign in. And on a phone, you can see here, this is what it's going to look like as they're logging their checks. So for example, if it looks good, they're going to mark it in green. If there's a problem, they're going to go ahead and set that alert feature. Anything that you see with a red highlighted box around it, that's a required note. And you can have required notes on anything and everything. So if you don't want them to just kick the tires, but actually measure the tire pressure, they're going to be able to go in there and, and mark that information. And because if they don't and they try to log their items, it's going to give them a hard stop and make them go back and, and put that information in. The other thing that you can do within the system is you can attach pictures um, to the alerts, all right? This was actually our first fire department Blackhawks idea. 12 years ago, they, they were like, wouldn't it be nice if, if we could just take a picture instead of typing everything out? Couldn't we just take a picture and attach it? And so we put that functionality together. So you can take a picture, attach it to that alert, and that picture is going to stay with that alert indefinitely. So even after the problem's been resolved and the alert's been closed off and put into the archives, if in the future you need to pull that information back out, you're going to be able to get in there and do that. One more thing on the alert feature, and then <clears throat> I'll take us into our demo site here. Again, you can see here, this looks good. You know, here maybe we added some air, but here we have a flat tire. So what's going to happen now is once this alert is set, it's going to text, email, or both off to the appropriate person or a group of people who are in charge of handling that particular situation. So maybe you have a repair shop down the street and you've got you know, uh, you know, know, some people down there that you wanna get those alerts. Maybe you know, you've got an outside vendor for PPE or SCBA repairs and you wanna notify them. They can all be included because it's not an app, because it's cloud-based. You can have all of these people included um, as recipients for these alerts. We have other uh, agencies and departments who want the chief to get every single alert. Again, what we ask you to think about at this point Point is what are your internal policies and procedures? Let us know what those are and then we can set these alerts up based on uh, who needs to see them. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to bring our demo site over real quick. I'll log out just so you can see what this looks like. Again, for those of you who are familiar, just bear with me a second. We'll, we'll get through this here. But for those who aren't, I just want them to see how this works. So everybody has a unique username and password. We're going to go ahead and sign in. And it's going to take me to the home screen. Now, this is our demo site. So we have all of the modules represented here. So keep in mind, again, if you don't have one of these or you're not interested in one of them, it's not going to show up here. It's also not going to show up in your drop down over here. OK, so in our demo site, these are the schedule of items that are due for the day. All right. And you can see we have every the, the things in the order we want them in. Here are our alerts. Now, on our demo site, um, we have our alerts staying on here for 14 days, or anything that's marked urgent stays on here until the appropriate people who are in charge of closing off urgent alerts can get to, can get in here and do that. Um, so that's customizable as well. You can have these alerts stay on here for 10 days, 30 days, 120 days, whatever makes the most sense for your department. And then right here is that journal I was telling you about. All right. So you can see on our journal, we have things like pass on reports, general notices, emergency calls. If I were to add a post just so you can kind of see what this looks like if you're not using it. Um, 
these are the categories that we kind of see are the most popular um, from the departments that we work with. So we've got trainings, pass on reports, station tours, you know, someday we might get to do that again. I don't know. But <laughs> when that day comes, you know, maybe you've got a station tour that you want to post up here and you're going to, you know, say what school is coming through or what have you. You can make these station specific or department wide and you can have these remain on the homepage until archived or not. Again, this is just another nice tool to keep everybody, uh, keep the lines of communication open. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you what it looks like from a crew member or, you know, a staff member standpoint to do a check, set an alert, and move on. So you can see how simple it is because one of the biggest pieces of feedback that we got early on was that if it's clunky, if it's cumbersome, if it's confusing in any way at all, you know as well as we do, people aren't going to use it. You're not going to get the buy-in that you need from it. So PS Tracks has really evolved over the years based on the feedback that we've gotten from current departments that we work with. We're, I mean, we're not firefighters. Robbie's not a firefighter. I'm not a firefighter. Um, we've got one person in the entire company, and that's the owner's daughter who has anything to do with that. And so we really rely on you guys to give us your feedback, to let us know what works for you and what doesn't work for you, because we want to make sure that it does what you need it to do. So I'm going to show you what this looks like, just so you have an, an understanding of it. Um, so let's work on engine one real quick. We'll do a vehicle check first. Here we see we've got 173 items due. I always tell people don't let that overwhelm you because we will set this up based on daily, weekly, monthly, how, every third Tuesday of the month, however you want these set up. So for example, today, I have 173 items that are due for me to, as I'm doing my check. So I'm gonna go into these checks. And what I wanna point out here, really important, crew is never going to have to guess what's due. Okay, because of the way we set it up for you, they know when they go in, this is exactly what's due today. They don't have to try to pick and choose what they need to check. They know this is exactly what's due. So here you see, we've got some daily checks due. Here's our weekly checks. We've got some monthly inventory that's due today um, and so on and so forth. You can have these drop downs go on and, and on. The other thing I wanna point out is anywhere you see one of these little paper clips, um, you can attach training resources in the system, okay? On any of your modules, you can attach training resources. This is especially useful for a lot of our volunteer and combination departments for, you know, if you have a volunteer company and maybe they're only in every three or four months and, and it's their day to do a check and they don't really remember how to do it, they can just click on the paperclip here. They'll, you can include pictures, you can include videos, gives them a really good understanding of what to do and they don't have to waste time, number one, you know, trying to find somebody to help them or more commonly that we hear is just not doing the check at all. So you can attach pictures, you can attach videos. So here we've got, you know, uh, how to do, you know, a, a hub oil level check. They can click on that and see that real easily. Anywhere that you see a little eyeball, that's going to give you a, a, a snapshot of the most recent task history. And this is on all of the modules. All right. So you can go in and see what was done over the last five or six checks. And the other thing, and I want to see if I have one on here. It doesn't look like that I do, but that's okay. Another icon that you may see in here next to the eyeball, right over here to the left, use your imagination, you might see a little red bell. And if you ever see a little red bell there, that means an alert has already been set on that particular check. When they click on that bell, it's going to open that alert up and you're going to be able to see right away what was done. So they're not, you're not getting those redundant, you know, emails or texts that say, hey, we need to work on this because it's already been identified. All right. So let's do this. I'm just going to do a few checks here. Oh, this box right here is called a check all box. Um, some departments love this. Some departments don't. Um, it's an option. So if I were to click on that, you can see it lights up everything right there. We see this more for things like I was talking about SCBA, PPE. Maybe you've got a med kit that has, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of EMS supplies in there and it's never been opened because it's got a duct tape or zip tie on there. You know everything's still in there. You don't want to open it up and go through everything. You might enable a function like this, um, but for things like checking your engines, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it. But so we'll just go through, we'll do some checks and let's say here we see an oil leak under the vehicle. So let's go ahead and set an alert. I'm going to click on the, on the red hazard sign there. 
and we'll just type in oil leak because it gave me my little drop down. We'll log these items. Another thing that's really important, you notice I didn't do all of the checks and that's okay. You don't have to do that with PS Tracks. You can do as many as you need to, log those tasks and move on. All right, so it's taking me to a confirmation screen just to make sure that everything that I've checked is exactly how I want it to look. Everything looks good. But because we've set this alert, everyone, now when I log these items, it's gonna take me to an alert confirmation screen. All right, now what's really important about this, what I want you to notice is this category is gonna be the identifying factor of who your alert recipients are, all right? So right now we've got vehicle maintenance marked. And so right now you can see, these are the people that are either gonna get a text or an email or both depending on how they set it up, all right? So we've got our little virtual maintenance shop here. We've got a vehicle warranty vendor identified here. But if I change my category from vehicle maintenance to say like small tools and equipment, now you can see that my my recipients have changed, all right? And this is completely customizable based on who should be getting these alerts. Um, another thing that you can do, let's say that these people are gonna get this alert, but there's that one person that should never really get them except for today. And you want, you know, Captain Smith over at station one to get this alert. You can go into that drop down here and look up whoever that person is and attach them at this point as well. Here's our description of, oh, let's go back to our, we'll go back to, vehicle maintenance there. Here's our description. You can put in any additional comments at this point. You can mark this as routine or urgent. You say pretty urgent here. Here's where you're gonna attach that picture. All right, now that functionality is the exact same as attaching a picture to a text or an email. They can take it right there with the phone and attach it right then and there. I'm gonna ask you to use your imaginations again because we're on my desktop. So we'll just pick our oil leak example and attach that right there. You can also put a cost in here at this point if you want to. We'll go ahead and set this alert. And right here, you can see there's the alert in real time. Also, as let's say I'm walking in for the day and I'm coming in to, to check in and I walk in and I see under engine one and oil leak as I'm walking in the bay, I can look over here and say, oh, wait a minute. It looks like Sally has already identified that there's a problem. I can click on the paper clip. Yep, that's what I'm seeing. I know it's already there. I don't have to identify it again. As a crew member, I am now done. I've done a check. I've made a note. I've set an alert. I can move on with my day. So as a front end user, that's it, all right? And that's how it functions with all of the modules. Now, let's say though, um, a couple things on the alerts. Let's finish with the alert since we were kind of talking about that for a moment. Let's say I'm one of the people that received this alert, okay? I can go in here and I can now add a comment. And I can say, you know, thanks, you know, pull out of service. We'll just say for now. Uh, maybe I'm starting, uh, you know, uh, an invoice that I want to scan in here. Maybe there's a particular part that I know needs to be ordered or the vendor that I've notified, I, you know, maybe it's an SCBA issue or something and I want to, I want to have them see what I want ordered. I can attach a PDF or something like that at this point. We're not going to close this alert because it hasn't been resolved. And here I have the opportunity to send notification to that same group of people or not. Well, since PS Tracks is a lot about accountability. I'm going to say, yeah, let's notify these people that we're making movement, that there's progress being made on this alert. So yeah, let's notify them. So we're going to save this. And now what you're going to see in real time is there's my response. Okay. So everybody can see this is, this is moving through the, through the process as it should. Now, something important here on any of the, on any of the alerts, for any of the modules. And you can see all of the different modules up here. We've got vehicle station, PPE, SCBA, assets, and controlled substances. For each one of these, it's very specific on who's allowed to close off an alert and who's not, okay? So not just anybody can get in there and close off this alert that I just set on the vehicle, all right? Usually the way we see most agencies and departments do this is either somebody in an administrative position, the chief, or maybe the person who set the alert, those are the only ones that are allowed to close them. But again, it's very specific to what you ask us to do and we can set it up based on what you need. So let's close this alert off. We'll go ahead and go in, we'll edit this. We can see all of our information here. Here we're gonna be asked for the reason, we'll just say it's fixed. 
Um, maybe we've got a, re a receipt now that we want to scan in here. We can go ahead and add that attachment. Maybe this is a before and after picture of damage. We can attach that as well. Here we're going to put our cost in. Let's say it was $300 to fix this. Now the system's going to track all of the costs associated with the maintenance of this particular vehicle. This functions the same for uh, you know alerts on your PPE, on your SCBA, on your critical assets. You're able to track all the costs based on these alerts if you need to. We're going to go ahead and close this alert. And do I want to notify everybody that it's been resolved and closed off? I do. So we're going to save this. Give my computer a second to refresh here. There we go. And now what you'll see is that alert has now been removed from the screen. Now it's not been deleted, it's been put into the archive. So if you are now, if you have admin permission, admin rights, and you need to see a history of your alert archives, we can go, this is one way to look at them. This is my favorite way to look at it because I think it's the simplest. We can go right up here into this little drop down. Again, here are all of our different modules. We can see all of the different open alerts or alert archives from this, from the, <clears throat> this section right here. But I'm gonna go into the alert archive for our vehicles. I can change stations if I want. I can look at it by the vehicle. So I'm going to go into engine one since that's what we were working on. I can look at it by category. I can even look at it by who posted it. If I want to see all the maintenance shop alerts or you know all the vendor alerts or what have you, I can look it up. But for now, I'm just going to leave it all so you can see what this pulls up. Here's where we're going to <clears throat> select our date range. So we'll just go back a couple months here. We'll view the search results. And now what the system is doing is it's pulling up a customized report that's going to show us all of the alerts that were ever scheduled on engine one from Tuesday, November 3rd to today, January 5th, right down here. So we can go right down here and here are all the alerts that have ever been sent on this vehicle. Now we're going to see the date and the time that things were open because everything within the system, whether it's a check, whether it's alerts, what have you, is date and time stamped. All right, so we're going to see the date and the time that this was opened, who opened it, when it was closed, and who closed it, the category, the station it was posted, the description, its priority, was it urgent or not. Anywhere you see this little paper clip, that means we've got a picture attached there. Okay, if the information was updated, we're going to see that as well. If we just want to go in and see the quick details of, for example, this alert set yesterday, we can go into the details here. <clears throat> And we can see this vehicle was still having problems yesterday. So we have got an, an oil leak issue apparently with our vehicle. <laughs> so we've got all of Dave's information because Dave is the one who set this. All of his information, his picture, the cost associated with it. We're also going to know who is made aware of this alert. All right. So a lot of accountability again. But if they're like, no, I don't need to see all of this information. I don't want to see all the alerts. We can go into our search bar and let's say we only want to see anything having to do with like the emergency lights. We can go in here and type in our search bar alert emergency lights and now you're going to see that this report has customized even further down to only show us any of the alerts having to do with emergency lights. If they're like perfect, that's what I needed to see. I need a hard copy of that. We can go right here. We can drop it into a, we can print it the way it is or drop it into an Excel or PDF, print that off and then there's our hard copy for anybody who might need that. Now that's, that's how the alerts work on every single module within the system, okay? So we, we pretty much covered that. Um, I do know that you wanted to kind of talk a little bit about um, the station module and the uh, controlled substance module. So let's kind of do that real quick. Now within the station module, here again, you can see how we have this named. We've got it called station one checks, all right? Again, you can name this however you want it. Um, so we'll go into, to the station check so you can kind of see what we have set up here. Within the station module, you can track things like your station chores, very basic EMS supplies. So a, different than the inventory module, um, this can track very basic supplies. Um, it's not gonna track movement or things like that, but you can go through and track some expiration very general expiration dates. You can, you know, you can run a report off of this to, to, to give to whoever might be keeping track of your EMS supplies, who's in charge of ordering those. But you can see here, we've got things like our daily checks or we've got some, you know, clean the bathrooms, vacuum. I mean, just the things that people sometimes don't do and you're like, just do them. You know, we don't want to be big brother here, but we also want to be able to, you know, 
have, you know, hold people accountable for things. So here's some of our weekly checks. Here's our weekly EMS inventory. So you can kind of see we can track minimum and maximum quantities here. The way we have it set up, like for example, you know, these adult BBMs, you've got a maximum of four when you, and as they're doing their checks, it says here, reorder. When you get two, set an alert if there's, you know, if we're in within 90 days of the expiration. We've got our station supplies, right? Everybody's got somebody in charge of ordering the station supplies. God forbid we ever run out of toilet paper again in this country, I swear. So you want to make sure you got your toilet paper here. You, get, you can go through and do this. Here's a medication expiration check within the station module that you can track as well. So these are just some examples. You know, here's our apparatus room that we've got that's due today. So this is kind of an example of the station module. Again, it functions exactly like the vehicle module. You do your checks, you set your alerts, um, things like that, and it can be set up that way. So that's just kind of a taste of the, of the station module. And then I do know that we wanted to look at controlled substances real quick. Um, now this one does operate a little bit differently than the other modules, but as you're gonna see, it also functions very similarly. What's important about the controlled substance module? Um, we really reserve this for only people who should have access to it, all right? So if you are a, a department that has, you know, medics who are allowed to have access, but then you have, you know, other crew members who should have no access at all, we can set it up so that when you're operating this, only the people that are allowed to see it, see it. Okay, so if they're not allowed to see it, it's not going to show up here on their screen. It's not going to show up in their drop-down menu over here. All right, so let's look at some settings real quick within the controlled substance module. Um, you can set up your, if you're, you can set it up by container or by vial. You have a custom field set up. I do wanna show you this because it is extremely customizable. So if you use tags, we don't have it set up, up this way in our demo site, but if you do use tags, you can have it set up like that. You're gonna have arriving check settings, departing check settings. You can have, you can have, um, signatures, arriving and departing signatures on any and all of these. You can also, uh, um, and I always forget the name of this, I'm so sorry. You can also have a number so that when they go in, instead of just have, we have some departments who were getting a little concerned about the signatures. They were like, I can't read their signature. Is there a way we can track that? Yes, you can also, before they enter a signature, you can have them enter a personalized number, an identification pin number that will then pop that drop down for them that then they can sign. So you kind of got that dual authentication there if you need that. So anyway, uh, back to this. So you can have up to six custom settings under each of these sections, all right? So you've got your arriving checks, departing checks, used and transferred out, expired settings, broken settings. You can see how customizable this is, all right? So you can restock settings, transfers, inventories. So I just wanted to show you that really quick. Um, this is also very specific to who your alert recipients are. All right? This is completely separate than setting up your alert recipients for your vehicle stations, SCBA, PPE, all of that. These, these people are completely separate from that group, all right? So it's very specific to who's going to get alerts on each one of these, as you can see here. And each one of these people may be completely different for those settings as well. Um, activity report recipients. So at the end of every day, you're going to get a status report, all right? Now, the status report for the controlled substance module is completely separate than the other status report that you, then you're going to get for all the other modules. So it's very, again, very specific. This is a kind of in and of itself, its own animal. So you just need to think about who you want to receive those status reports on a daily basis. This is basically going to show you exactly what was used, exactly what's expired, what's been transferred, what, what, you know, what calls were made. That's where this is going to come into play. So whoever gets that lovely report is going to get that every day. And then we have our exception report recipients. Um, and that's just going to be select the personnel to receive a daily email for unlocked controlled substance events. All right, so a little bit different there. So what I'm going to do, and again, we're going to keep this super high level. I'm going to show you what it would look like for one of your medics to go through and do a quick check here. So we'll go in and we're going to perform this check. Move some stuff out of the way here. 
All right, so here we've got our date. This is the most recent check that I just did earlier this morning. Um, everything is going to be date and time stamped. We're gonna select an event and I'm gonna go ahead and do an arriving check. I'm gonna begin this check. Oh, sorry, on Medic One. Guess I need to work on someone there, but there we go. And we'll go ahead and we'll put in our quantity levels that we're supposed to have for the day. And we'll continue. And now what it's gonna do is it's gonna take me to a confirmation screen just to verify that everything I have that I just said I had is actually accurate. So I'm gonna go through and say, yes, I've got all of this. And we'll continue. And now it's gonna take me to a third confirmation screen just because of what it is. Um, I can put any comments or notes in here. I can add an attachment at this point. Here's where I'm gonna do my signature. Now I'm using my mouse. so it looks terrible, but what most people do is they use like a stylus or their finger. Here's my releasing medic, we'll just say is Scott. And we'll have him do his signature for us. We'll finish. And now what you'll see here on my most recent activity is here's the arriving check that we just did. All right, so here's my arriving check with my three, three and three. I can uh, take a look at the expected inventory here if I want to. Now let's go ahead and use something. All right, let's say we got pulled out on a column, we're gonna use something. So we're gonna use or transfer out. Again, these are totally customizable. You don't have to call it used slash transferred out. If you have something specific that you call it, you can name it whatever you want. But we'll go back on to medic one here. We'll begin our check. All right, now it's gonna ask us for the reason for removal. So we've got our option of administered, expired, broken, or other. Recently, I just had another department ask us to add stolen to this. Apparently they've been, I can't even imagine, but they've been victims of people as they go out on a call coming in and, and stealing their, their medications, very sad. But um, so again, these are totally customizable, but for now, I'm gonna say, let's go ahead and administer something and let's use one fentanyl and we'll continue. So here we'll go ahead and pick, we'll just pick this one for now. Now remember, anything with a, a red highlighted box around it is a required note. So I can't just mark this and skip over it. So for our example here, these are some of the required notes that we have. So let's say we've got, you know, this is incident number and we've used, um, you know, 0.5. And that means we wasted, you know, 0.5. Um, if you're required to use EPCR numbers, you know, you can put that in. Maybe patient weight is one of the things that you've decided that you want to have as a required note. You can put that in. Um, here's where we can put some more com comments and notes. Let's say, you know, this was a, a car accident and the patient, you know, was transferred to, you know, Denver General Hospital, let's say. Um, maybe, you know, the, the officer on the scene, uh, you know, has asked you to take a picture of something, you want to attach that in here. Maybe at the hospital, the hospital's giving you something for the patient, you want to scan that in, you can do that as well. Um, here we'll do our signature again, sorry about the horrible signature. And, uh, you know, let's say our witness, hi, Robbie, let's make it you. <laughs> so we'll make Robbie our witness. Uh, but it can also be a doctor at the hospital, it can be a nurse, however you want to set that up. We'll log the event. Yes, we're gonna remove it from stock. All right, and then what you're gonna see here is here was my arriving check. We've used one on this incident number. So if I click on this incident number, it's now gonna show us all the information about this incident number. Something important to point out here, where it says edit this information, this is not accessible to anybody except people that have admin permission, okay? Um, obviously I'm logged in with full admin rights, so I can edit this information at this time because you know, sometimes we know that you go out, you go on your call, you've administered all that, but you don't have time during that call to do all this. So when you, you wait till you get back to the, the station to do it, right? Well, by the time you get back now, your time is different. So you, 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 you may have to take this to somebody and say, you know, I did this about a half an hour ago. It's showing as 946, but really it was, you know, 915, can you change the time? That person will be allowed to go in and edit the information. But for just, you know, your, your medic who has just medic uh, access, they won't be able to change that. Um, and now it's showing us that we are below par. So we started with three, we're down to one. So now we're below par. So let's go ahead and get us back up to par before we go out on our call. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in here and we're going to transfer, all right? And we're going to transfer from our drug vault. There we go. And we're going to transfer it back onto Medic 1 because that's the one we were working on. So we'll begin this check. All right, so now it's, we're, we're in our drug vault. We're gonna pull out one fentanyl. We'll continue. Now it's gonna ask us which one, all right? So we've got all this information here. We'll just pick the top one here. We can put any comments or notes again. Here's my signature. Maybe this time it's Dave, who's my wit. Oh, let's not delete it. Dave, who's my witness. I'll give him a huge smile. And we'll log this event. And now you can see right here, we've added one and we're back up to par level. Okay. So this is, again, this is a very, very general overview. You can perform, you can set your alerts. We've got our controlled substance transaction log. So if we need to go in there, we can take a look at, you know, the location, um, what check type, we'll just leave it all. You know, here's our date range. We'll just go back to last week. So now we're gonna be able to see our controlled substance log right down here. We're gonna be able to see everything from the date and the time it was done, who logged it. Again, this report is very specific, the check type, what it was, what we had, what was used, comments, signatures, all of that's gonna be included in the controlled substance. You can look at your active vial list. So what vials do you currently have active? What are currently getting ready to expire? We can reorder this. We can see these have already expired. We probably need to do something with those, uh, whether you, you turn them in somewhere or, however, or dispose of them however you want. And all of these, are, are due to expire. So we, you know, we're able to run that expiration so we can see what's going on there. Um, and we also can take a look at our vial archive. So what has already been used and what's been put into our archive, we can see that as well. Real quick on the settings, and I do wanna show you this, gosh, guys, I'm trying to hurry here uh, because this is really important. On the personnel side of things, um, on all of our modules, you're going to have different options of setting them up as they're either an, an admin, a user, uh, there's a middle ground there. So let's go into our user list. Again, this is on the back end, so only people with admin permission are going to be able to do this. But you're able to go in, you're able to see all of your uh, crew, their login information. But also if we need to go in here, and let's just go into Nathan, for example, and let's edit him real quick. I just want you to see this real quick. <clears throat> On our personnel settings, you can see here, we've got all of their information. We can see if they're gonna get an email, a text or both, if they're alert recipients, what shift they're on, if they've got a badge number, all of this information is gonna be here for them. Um, what access they're allowed to have. So are they gonna have access to all of your locations or maybe just one or however you wanna set that up. So that's really great for vendors or your maintenance shop, for example. Maybe you don't want them to have access to everything, but they do need to have access to the maintenance shop you know, they will have access to that one location. For vehicles, you can have admin or user settings. So maybe you want them to just be a user, but you want, them to be able, you want them to be able to close alerts. You can set that up that way, or you want them to be able to manage the apparatus, but you don't want them to have full admin permission. You can do that. Same for PPE, they've got an admin or user status, SCBA. Assets has admin, user, and no access. So maybe you don't want them to have access to the asset module at all. We could set that up. Here on our controlled substance module, you can see we've got full admin, which is that person has full access to everything. They can make changes. They can add things. They can take things out. Medic admin can change some of the information, but not all of it. Medic is only allowed to do checks, all right? And no access at all means that they are not going to be able to do anything within the system. It's not going to show up at all for them. Inventory module settings, and then the additional permissions. You obviously don't want everybody to have access to manage your personnel. And this was a hard reality. We didn't realize people would be inappropriate with the journal. We were super, super wrong on that one. So we had many departments request that we put in a, a access permission level that took per that permission away from people. So if you know <laughs> that you might have somebody who's not 
doing what they should, let us know and we can take them right off. And then this is new uh, for those of you who are our current uh, uh, clients with us, this is new. We have added the emergency contact information uh, portion of this. This came about because of COVID. A lot of people had, you know, old fashioned Rolodexes or things on sticky notes or some were lost on a Word doc and they weren't able to find you know, if somebody was exposed and they needed to get a hold of the family. So if you are a current client and have not used this yet and you don't have a platform already that you're tracking your emergency contact information in, please go in and have, um, have your uh, staff update their information in here um, so that you've got access to that. Phew. All right, on that note, let's take a break. I think I covered the modules that we wanted to look at. Again, I know it was super high level. Robbie, at this point, I kind of want to defer to you for a second. Were there any questions that came through? I'm looking at our time. Were there any questions that came through that I need to address? Um, well, Sally, I know, I know we're a little short on time and uh, we did have a request to see the SCBA. Is there any way we can touch on that briefly? Um, we can. I know you've been doing a lot of lifting here. <laughs> No, okay. that's fine. As long as everybody else is good with it, let's let's touch on SCBA yeah. real quick. Yeah, let's spend the last few minutes doing that. And then okay. um, if there's any other questions, uh, we'd be happy to take them as we go through too. Thanks a lot, Sally. Yeah, no worries. As long as we're good on time. And again, if you if you guys end up jumping off because you, you want to be done right in an hour, I respect that. Um, like Robbie said, we are we are taping this and it is on Facebook as well. If you want to rewatch me later, you can do that. <laughs> So yeah, so with the SCBA module, um, important to note that we do follow all NFPA guidelines on all of our modules. Um, what I wanna point out with the SCBA module, a um, couple of things. With the vehicle module, if it rolls on the rig, it's included in the vehicle module, all right? So we understand that I have, I work with the department out here uh, on the Easter Plain, Sable Altura, single station department, all volunteer, they have like, three vehicles and none of their SCBA move. It always stays on the on those vehicles. So for them, they're fine with just doing their checks on their vehicles, going in, you know, um, finding them on the vehicles and doing their checks. So that's what this would look like. With the SCBA module, um, you can go in, and the way we have it set up is we, we've got it to retrieve the items based on a location. So this is our, our SCBA location, B, C, D. It looks like somebody already did A. Um, but again, these can be set up however you want. I'm gonna go in and retrieve these items. And as you can see, this looks just like the vehicle module, right? So crew can go in, here's that example of the check all box. You know, maybe they already know everything's good. They're just gonna quick go through that. Again, not a lot of departments utilize that. And I don't blame them because maybe you're concerned about that virtual pencil whipping thing. If you are, then you don't need to use this, but I always like to show it because it is an option. So they're gonna go through just like they did on their vehicle checks, all right? They're gonna go through, they're gonna do all their checks, they're gonna set any alerts, they're gonna attach any pictures, so on and so forth. So for some departments, that's enough. They don't need to track all the movement or uh, when the next hydro is due or uh, when the expiration or how much it costs. That may be enough for you. If that is, that's included in the vehicle module. If, however, you want to use the SCB mod SCBA module to its fullest, on the back end, let's show you what that looks like. So I'm going to go into our, uh, our gear list so you can see what this looks like. All right, so here we've got our gear types. So you can see all the different types that we've got loaded in and our statuses. So maybe we just wanna see everything that's active, inactive, maybe it's missing or out for repair. For now, I'm just gonna leave it all so you can see what it looks like and we've got everything pulled up down here. So what I wanna show you, and this is pretty robust, okay? So you're gonna see every type, ID number, serial number, who your manufacturer is, size, and this again, Remember, don't get overwhelmed by this. This is all that information we're gonna put in for you, okay? So you send us whatever format you have, send it to us and our team will build all of this out for you. Now, the other thing, you don't have to have every one of these filled in, not each. If you don't have your cost right away or if you don't have the manufacturer data, whatever, it doesn't have to be in here for this to operate. It's nice because at the end of the day, you want to be able to pull reports based on what you have in here. 
but it's it's not required for us to, to build it for you. So here we've got expiration dates. I can reorder that and see, you know, these have already expired and these are due to expire. Nothing worse than having all of your equipment expire all at one time and then not be prepared for it. Um, when is its next hydro? When's its next flow due? When was it last logged and where, okay? Um, and who was it last logged by? Let's say we go in here though, and we just wanna see, I don't know, we'll just go into this cylinder and we just wanna see the details of this cylinder. We can click on details. <clears throat> and now on the back end, it's gonna show us everything we need to know about this cylinder, okay? So we're gonna see who it's assigned to, all of its information, what its initial cost was, what it has cost us to date. This equipment is not cheap and we know that. <laughs> Manufacture date, expiration date, when was its last check and last hydro. If there's a full history of it over here, we're gonna see this. So if we you know, wanna change our date range, I don't know what's gonna pull up on this one. Um, but if we pull that information up on this side of the screen, it's gonna pull up all of the SCBA history. Well, we're waiting for that to, there we go. So you can see here, we can see everything that's been done. We can even drop this into an Excel or a PDF and print it off. We can even on the back end here, log an event, all right? So if, as the admin, let's say I need to log an event on this particular cylinder, I can go in here, I can log a daily check. Maybe I need to log a flow test. I can go in, do that. I can do the cost. I can enter notes. I can scan in any receipts that I've gotten. Maybe I wanna do a hydrostatic test again. I can do all of that on the back end if I want to. Other things I can do, I can set an alert from here. I can edit the information. So let's say you don't have it all at once. You send us everything. We load it in for you. And maybe the one thing you didn't have was the condition. And now you do. And you want to enter that it's excellent. We can do that. And we'll save that. Um, or maybe the initial cost is wrong or what have you. We can save that information. That will now update that for us. Um, we can assign this to a different location, possibly. Sorry. Oh, there we go. So maybe it's going to be assigned. We're, we're moving it to assign it to a peep, or I'm sorry, a, a, an equipment repair or something like that. We can reassign that. We can change its status. So maybe it's out for repair and we wanna change its status. We can do that from this point. So you can see, maybe we need to schedule an event on it. All of this can be done. Now this can also be done um, in, a, in a batch as well. All right, so I'm just working on one for now just to show you what it looks like. But let's say we'll go back to our gear list here. And let's say, you know, we want to do these four and we want to do a batch log of some sort and we want to do a batch air fill we can do that schedule that and it will batch all of those at the same time so you don't have to do one at a time i was just showing you as an example so you could see um, we can also on your scba do you want to show you this too you have several different reports that you can run on those so i can go right in here i can go into my logs I can see logs by task. I can run an expiration date report on them, a hydrostatic test date report, flow test date, air fill report, cost report. All of this is included in the SCBA module. So there's a lot, there's a lot that goes in behind this, um, especially for those of you who are, are you know, you are you are the subject subject matter experts for your SCBA, and this is your baby. This is a great tool for you guys. I know that was a lot that was really, really fast and high level, um, but hopefully that touched on it enough to, to give you a good understanding of that. Um, anything else, Robbie, that maybe I'm just going to run through these as you're looking at questions because uh, we touched on the vehicle module. We touched on SCBA, again, logging those inspections, full histories, tracking flow initial cost. PPE is a sister module to SCBA, functions very similarly. Critical assets, if you're interested in that, let me know. We can go over that at another time. You know, really tracking those radios, tick cameras, things that are constantly moving and maybe, you know, are grant funded or donations, things like that. This, this module is excellent for tracking those. We went over controlled substances. We talked about stations. And the inventory module, again, if this is something you're interested in, please let us know. It, it 
deserves its own uh, time. It takes, it would take me as long to go over this as it took me to go over everything else. <laughs> so, but again, you can manage your, your consumables, um, every inventory location, all of its movement, tracking its quantity levels, transferring supplies and refill locations, documenting inc incident supply usage, automatic alerts for your PAR levels, all of that's included in the inventory module. We're really excited about that one. We're excited about all of them, but as our newest module, that one took over a year to build. So we're really excited about that one. Um, anything else? No, Sally, great job. Great job, thank you so much. And uh, <gasps> what I'm gonna do, I just have one more piece for everyone. If, if you are interested in looking at, like Sally mentioned, um, you know, maybe diving into one of these modules a little bit more with your team, uh, you can request a team demo. I'll follow up with you after this. And um, also, if you'd like to look at uh, perhaps a, a particular module uh, in pricing for your agency, uh, you're welcome to to, to uh, select that in the polling here too. But I'll let this run for a little bit longer. Um, Sally, anything else you would like to add in closing? today? I don't think so. I know we were going to talk about um, upcoming events and virtual road shows. Um, yeah. And dates. Did we? Yeah. And I, uh, we, sure, sure. So um, at PSTracks.com slash events, we have, um, I, I touched on our, our hydrant testing and uh, critical asset module, which we'll be diving into on the 19th. That's two weeks from today, uh, right back here at 9 a.m. Mountain Time. And also we have, if you are new to PS Tracks, want to learn about how PS Tracks Champion does it, how they rolled it out with their crews, kind of what that looked like, and and they can even run through their system. We have them do a live demo of their system and how they're using it uh, internally. That is our, our virtual roadshow. Those are really fun events to be a part of. Our next one is coming up on the 26th of January. Again, you can find that PSTracks.com slash events. That's with uh, volunteer department out east, uh, Water Witch Hose Company, number two. Yes. Pretty excited about that. Very and, excited uh, again, about that's that. Again, that's a great way. We make, yeah, we make that as interactive as we can, and uh, you can ask your, ask questions. We turn on everybody's cameras and, uh, um, and and have you available for audio so you can ask questions live uh, to their team. So I believe we'll wrap it up here, Sally. And yeah. um, again, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, we know you're under so much pressure and stress out there, and please stay safe and take care yes. of yourselves and your crews. Yeah, and thank you again. You guys, we know we know how hard you're working, and we know how crazy it is right now, and we can't thank you enough for having our backs. So thank you, and and hopefully this was this was really helpful. And we would love if you're not if you're not part of our family yet, we would love to have you. And if you are, thank you again. Thank you so much for giving us your time today. We appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Stay safe.